Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 2nd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, there is malware, there's bloatware, and then there is bloated malware, and that's a sample that Pratt looked at. Uh, this particular sample, STR Rat, as Pratt is identifying it, is actually downloading a complete Java runtime environment. As so often, it starts with uh, Office Macro, in this case, Excel, that's doing the first download, and the first download is going straight for uh, Java runtime, environment about 70 megabyte of compressed uh, data that's being downloaded here. Brad actually had a newer version of Java installed on the virtual machine where he tested this. Apparently the malware didn't care. Of course, this is a little bit typical for a software written in Java where they sort of insist in using very specific versions of Java. So they tend to always uh, install their own JRE. One reason they went for Java is that, first of all, of course, uh, the Java runtime environment is not malicious. It's not recognized as malicious by anti-malware. Next, a uh, jar file is being downloaded. That's the actual Java executable. And uh, I guess they assume, not sure how true this is, that uh, anti-malware may have a hard time detecting malware if it is uh, included in a jar file. So uh, not really sure how well this will work, but certainly an interesting trick. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, downloading 70 megabytes of data isn't really all that noticeable these days to the user. And Bitdefender has an interesting write-up on vulnerabilities they found in the IPC360 baby monitor. It's a device that really sort of combines the worst parts of IoT and the cloud security. Of course, should be pretty obvious by now that many sort of IoT devices and such are heavily relying on cloud components. Same for this baby monitor. Now, one thing, for example, that's being stored in the cloud with this baby monitor is recordings of the built-in camera. And apparently there is no access control set, at least uh, no read restrictions on the S3 bucket storing everybody's recording. So they're widely accessible. There's also an API that's then being used to connect to the actual uh, camera. Now uh, you need to authenticate uh, to connect uh, to this API, but once connected, you're actually able to then connect to any camera, not just to the ones you own. You just need to know their serial number. And of course, that could easily be looked up in the exposed S3 bucket. I guess the buffer overflow and then also some of the hard-coded RTSP credentials that are really more uh, exploitable if you're on the same network as the camera, well, uh, they're really almost negligible given the remote vulnerabilities and cloud vulnerabilities in this uh, project. Product. Bitdefender originally discovered these vulnerabilities in November last year. They several times tried to reach out to the vendor, never received a response. That's why now they decided to actually go forward with the disclosure. And talking about these kind of uh, video uh, systems, we also uh, got an advisory from uh, CISA stating that there is an update available for the Anki network video recorder. Now, this is only compared to the prior case, a uh, stack-based buffer overflow, but uh, can be patched uh, with updated uh, firmware. And of course, it does require direct access to the NVR for exploitation. And Cisco's uh, TELUS uh, team came across a new way how uh, bad actors are monetizing compromised PCs, in particular home PCs. The way this is done is by essentially selling access to these PCs uh, to so-called Proxyware. Proxyware, I guess you could also call it kind of a VPN or how VPNs are used. Of course, often VPNs are used to appear to originate from a specific 
specific geography. But then if you are connecting from a VPN, you often connect from, for example, a cloud provider or some other hosting provider, not from a residential ISP. And that's often being used to filter out requests that are routed via a VPN. So the way it is supposed to work is that a home user who wants to make a little bit money on this site is essentially reselling part of their bandwidth by installing a special client on their system. Then these proxyware providers are able to resell that access to their clients. But of course, what the malicious actors have discovered is, well, uh, they can also install uh, these clients on the proxyware providers behalf without the actual owner and user of the PC knowing, and that way reap some of the monetary benefit. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.